I became um, a single mother almost overnight. Um, and I had to get healthy as quickly as I possibly could for my kids. And so my inspiration were my boys to get healthy mind, body, and soul so that they had the healthiest mother to raise them. And I thought someone was going to come and knock on my door and save me, but nobody came. And so I had to save myself. One day I was in a hurry, going to the pickup line, picking up my kids from school, rushing, trying to get them a snack, get myself a snack. And I ended up at a coffee shop right before I went to pick them up. And there was a guy there and something in me just said, stop and talk to him. And it was so clear and I just immediately stopped. And we started to talk while we waited for our snacks and coffee. And he was telling me about his need to heal from addiction recovery and that there was this place called the Franciscan Renewal Center that he would go to to find peace and quiet. And I thought, oh, that sounds wonderful. I need some of that. <laughs> so I picked up my kids. And later that evening, I went to this place that ended up only being a half a mile from my house. And I had driven by that place for 20 years and never stopped in because it wasn't my religious faith. Yeah. And that was a, a limiting belief for me. And so I had to overcome the fact that maybe there is something in that place for me. And that was my first hurdle. And, um, and I'm so glad that I pushed through that because that's where I found this magical place of peace and quiet where I could actually tune in and hear my voice, my, what I call my soul's voice, the voice that we are born with, the voice that is the infinite voice that is always with us and always wanting for us to be able to hear it. And I wrote this book, Get Quiet to help people be able to hear the voice. That's wonderful. And when this gentleman, I mean, here you are a single lady, you're in a coffee shop and a gentleman is like, hey, do you want to sit down and just chat? From what I read, it was like, there was just this inner knowing you say your first hurdle was that the labyrinth was located at a place that had a different faith. But as I read the book, I was like, maybe it was also just slowing down and sitting with a gentleman that you didn't know in the midst of all this chaos that you had going on as well. I mean, you listen to your soul to even be willing to do that, which... From observation, I would think that took a willingness to just pause and say, okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm going to do it. As a busy mom, when my son, I only had one, you had two. And you took that time to sit and listen. And to me, that speaks volumes about what a pull this had for you. Like that labyrinth was something about that was calling you and saying, it's time. So have you talked to that gentleman since then? I have not. <clears throat> I have not. Excuse me. I have not talked to him. I really believe that there are people that come into our lives that are angels. Uh, and I don't know if uh, sometimes you feel like you're being carried in a way that you can't even explain. But I really had no business even being at that coffee shop that day because I never would have stopped. It's just not something I would have done. Yeah. 
and no less stop and talk with him. And then no less go into this um, place that was not my religious faith. And so I believe that we are carried to places that we can't explain how we got there sometimes. And this was one of those times for me. That's so beautiful. So I went and started to walk this labyrinth. And I had heard of labyrinths, but I didn't know anything about them. It ends up they are these 4,000-year-old ancient pathways that traverse back and forth, and you can walk them. They're not a maze, so they're not there to confuse you, Mm -hmm. but they're one way in and one way out. And it's sort of a metaphor from going from the outside world to the inner world, to your inner world. 